Conversion can work both ways. I always thought it seemed entirely possible. Some people have been reverse engineered mentally. Many, in fact. So rather than just end up the way they were by normal experiences and natural environment alone, there has been a great amount of influence and manipulation to steer the personality or behaviour to the desired result. Behaviour modification programmes have been with us for quite some time, under the guise of research at first, or marketing, then obviously is taken by organisations and institutions that wish to control people, what they think, what they say, and ultimately, what they do. A couple of my articles have already touched on this. The three Ds of conversion under coercion and nudge nudge. But moving on from internal lab experiments like Pavlov and Skinner had conducted, Around the 60s and 70s, the various institutions decided they needed bigger test groups, real-life settings and unsuspecting candidates. Ethics seemed to have been adapted as necessary. If it seems too edgy or is being questioned, say it's military and for national security. That seems to have been the golden ticket for much, going back quite some time. Say something is under threat and it seems you can do anything. As long as you say you are trying to save them, you can literally do the complete opposite. But as long as you say it, that's fine. Apparently. Trust what people do, not what they say. And if the two match up, no problem. They also spent a lot of money and time working out our behaviours so they could motivate us to buy what they wanted and think how they wanted towards things. Highlighted here in consumerism, but I had already thought on from it being just about shopping habits when I was much younger, when the argument of computer games and movies came up all those years ago in the media. It was being said that the level of violence and horror children were being exposed to would be harmful to them and would affect their mentality. I was into horror films and loved computer games when they first became affordable and mainstream, spent time like everyone else indulging in them. All that carefully crafted information to go in in whichever format the input was being presented, either books, films or games, or from the media. You can't help but accept that some of it is retained, or helps you to form your view on things, or think through scenarios you would otherwise have never been exposed to the concept, let alone a full simulated version of it. And for the people who are able to imagine and picture things in mind, maybe more than others, are they affected more? Did they work out that with clever triggers followed up by certain conditions, they could create a few abnormals, as I will call them. It's highly likely that some people have strayed off the map on their own. With the overload of stimulation and simulation going on, it can get too much. But when you add into that maybe, let's say, antipsychotic drugs, which seem to be apparently a running theme with school shooters in America, could that be what leads to a breaking down of being able to view the world through clear eyes? or with a clear mind. Being disconnected from reality, as it might be called, is something that cannot really be defined, despite it being a thing. Whose reality are we going to judge the scale? Is it really reality you are disconnected from? Or are you connected to actual reality, and it's the alternate one telling you to drift off into it, and drawing you in with bright, shiny, moving objects? I take it that they are talking about the shared reality, which is discussed more in separate realities, but the version we all have to take part in, interacting with people and society. Also makes me wonder, would we notice so much if parts of the simulated reality started to creep into real life? Many have likened recent events to episodes of the TV series Black Mirror, which I must confess I haven't seen, but would make sense given my other speculations on prep for disaster or clever programming that there is a reason it all seems so familiar and recognisable. Because it is meant to, making it much easier to shape and steer the public perception of something. I also thought it could be applicable with certain deviances and dysfunctions within society currently, which are not new, but seem rather prevalent at the moment. Paedophilia, and the way it seems to have infiltrated every part and level of society. Entertainment, fashion, institutions, the media, etc., and all the other areas we already knew of. So is it that there has been an explosion of them, and of sexual deviance generally? Or is it the media perception telling us that? Or have the people shapers been carefully crafting a type of person they wish to be prevalent within society? 
through timely exposures and clever marketing, films, news, stories, and generally using all they know about how people develop with sexuality. I wondered this also through reading about some of the ideals of conversion therapy and its early experiments and uses on people. And it occurred to me, if they could use that repeatedly on someone to try and stop them being homosexual, surely they would have tried it the other way around too, because that's the type of thing they would do. You know, just to see if it works. Then apply that to any type of behaviour, sexual or otherwise, and imagine that they could then create people with either short or long-term afflictions or desires, which suit a purpose for them, either to create industry, push an agenda, or have as a tool for later use within society. And of course, it could well be that it really was always that common, just hidden. And it's only now it seems to be held over so many, in so many walks of life. I can't help thinking there is something else, encouraging it, creating it, and facilitating it. For what, you might ask? Well, leverage. Until they get their way of making it accepted, or at least that seems to be the push they are going for. Could be another distraction. We shall see. But while all that has been chugging along, they have also been converting the average person and mindset towards ratings, likes, verifications, shares. They are all part of a validation credit system. That may not be in the same monetary terms like the financial social credit system, but it is the other side of the same coin. Financial credit systems equals the setup they show you with the QR codes, restricted access, banking, travel and restrictions, etc. All based on your economical position within their game of society. And then there is your social credit score, or social standing as I guess it used to be called, which will now run alongside it and be part of it. The amount of data we give them on a daily basis of our likes, dislikes, thoughts, fears, dreams, hopes, and wants is more than enough to garner the info needed to know what to do next. How to flick that switch in people was put there eons ago and we probably weren't even aware of it. Like sleeper cells, I guess, that we have all been programmed with a different set of instructions along a main theme, or have been party to a subconscious experiment drawing people in when the time comes, giving it a central point to collect and mutate, but within restricted boundaries, so the outcome can always be limited, because you set the parameters and everyone plays within them. If you only ever play the game of Monopoly, it is unlikely you will ever win a game of Risk, if you catch my drift. 